I would, I would say a, a big turning point for me was a couple years ago, I walked the Camino. Hmm. So I took a two month sabbatical, unpaid sabbatical from work to go do this crazy thing, which is walking 500 miles across Spain. And yeah. Can, can we pause something? there? So yeah. I think there's something really interesting here and I, I want to just try and capture it. I talk to a lot of people who want to do things like this and I suggest to them, why don't you take unpaid lead from your job? And it just seems unimaginable to people. So maybe first, and we'll definitely get to your exploration of walking the Camino, but how did you build up the courage to even ask for such a thing? Well, first of all, I think I got lucky because yeah. I work for an organization and specifically the woman that I work for, I really truly believe that she cares about my well-being. And that's pretty rare to feel that way about your <sighs> employer. Isn't that so sad? <laughs> Yeah, I know it is. It is sad. Um, so I think I lucked out in, in that I found myself in those circumstances. Um, I, and on the other hand, I was also pretty valuable to my organization. So mm. I've made them like $30 million or something like that by the, in the time that I've been working there. And they've rewarded me for that. So like three years in a row, they were giving me amazing raises. I felt very appreciated. And I got to the point where you know, I felt really comfortable on my income and I didn't feel like I needed another raise, which is crazy, right? You always just want to make more money, more money, right. more money. But from all my reading and conversations and self-exploration, I realized that time and freedom is at this point in my life is more valuable than more money. And so I was able to have a, I had a very good year again and so during my review and um, when we closed the fiscal year, I said, look, I really don't need another raise. What I need hmm. is more time and freedom. And wow. so I'm going to make this pretty unconventional ask. And it was scary. I'm not going to say that I was like this, you know, strong, courageous person that right. went in and, and asked for it. I was really scared because I knew that there was a highly high likelihood that they could deny my request. Um, and by that time I had really rearranged my whole life to be able to do this and saved a lot of money and kind of had my safety net in case they said no. And I tell myself if they would have said no, I would have went anyway. Right. But that just sounds good on a podcast. I don't know <laughs> that that's actually true. Right. Like I, I don't, I don't, mm. I don't know that I can claim that I'm that brave. I lucked out that they said yes. Yeah. It, it, you almost need to tell yourself that to even walk in the room and ask that question, right? Right. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to back down the first time they they say, "Ah, uh, actually, this is how we're going to do it." Um, yeah, and I and I didn't have any examples, just like you didn't have good examples of right. you know men in that position. I didn't have any examples of anyone who was you know a hard worker and as ambitious as I claim to be, um, asking for a two month unpaid leave. I mean, maybe if you, you know, I, I actually justified it by saying like, if I had a kid, I'd be gone for three months. I don't right. want to birth a child. I want to birth a world <laughs> adventure. Can I, I get that. two months off? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's fascinating. So take me to the Camino. What were your thoughts? Like w the flight over to Spain or wherever you flew in? Where was your head at that point? Oh, I've just, I can feel the feelings now of just being terrified. I mean, this was something that was really outside my comfort zone. Um, when I was preparing to go, a lot of my preparation was the physical side of things. So I was training a lot. I was breaking in my hiking shoes. I was doing these like 15 mile walks to try to like get my body ready. Um, I've never really considered myself a very athletic person, so I was a bit um, anxious about my physical ability to do it. Um, I also talked to like 20 people who had done it before I left to, to oh my God, I would ask them so many questions. I would, you know, I built this packing list of all the stuff I was taking with me and I'd have everyone review it to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything. I, you know, it's a very type A <laughs> way to go about it, right? Um, I think a gift of the Camino is embracing uncertainty. And that was really hard for me as a 
as a type a, a person, I'm a planner. And so I planned as much as I possibly could on the material side, on the physical side. But I, what I could never plan for is kind of the emotional side of um, being without work for two months, um, completely disconnecting and um, dealing with the uncertainty of, you know, I didn't know where I was going to sleep every night. I didn't know where I was going to get food. I just had to trust that I was going to walk and find it. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think just battling the uncertainty of all of it on the way there. And while I was in it, um, you know, that I was feeling a lot of that struggling with it for sure. Any moments that stand out and how far along were you in the walk? Um, actually, when I think about the walk, the first day is something that really stands out to me because, you know, I wake up at five in the morning and the first day I'm going over the Pyrenees mountains. So it's 27 kilometers over this big mountain. And, you know, it's one of the hardest days and it's the first day. And a lot of people, I remember there's certain people around me were maybe a little unprepared. Like I remember this um, one woman, she, her pack was too big and it wasn't fitted well to her. So she was struggling with it. Everyone was struggling with their feet. You mm -hmm. know, like I actually wasn't as struggling as much as the people around me. And so I felt overcome with this feeling of generosity that, I had, I was like an asshole New Yorker before, you know, so I was always just focused on myself and, and to actually be genuinely concerned about the people around me. It's like this instant sense of camaraderie that you're going over this, this mountain with these people. And, you know, some people didn't have enough water and I was carrying more water than I needed. So I was able to help them or, you know, I had some things for blisters in my pack and I was able to help people or, I had some extra food on me, that kind of thing. Um, so I would say that first day and feeling so um, connected with the people around me that I didn't even know um, really stands out a lot.